All right, everybody, welcome back. Today we are again talking about rotational motion and we are more talking about energy and work. Hopefully this has been all good refresher to everything. Uh, we've learned, we know before with translational motion, kinetic energy is equal to one half mass times velocity squared. So similarly with kinetic energy rotationally, we have one half kind of the rotational mass or moment of inertia times rotational velocity or angular velocity squared. So it looks very much the same as typical as we're starting to realize from this chapter. All right, so I'm gonna move on. A uh, simple example, hopefully. A sphere with an inertia of two-fifths mr squared with a mass, well, spheres have an inertia of two-fifths mr squared, with a mass of 28 kilograms and radius of 0.38 meters, is rotating with a constant angular velocity along the diameter of the sphere. If the kinetic energy of the sphere is 236 joules, what is the tangential velocity of a point on the rim of the sphere? Mm, okay. So it's saying the rotational kinetic energy is equal to one half I omega squared. And that means this is 236 is equal to one half the in, uh, inertia, which is two fifths at ma at mass 28, uh, radius of 0.38 squared. Um, and we don't know what omega is. We are looking for the velocity at the edge of this. So we're looking for this like tangential velocity. So, so we don't know what angular velocity is. That is what's going to help us with the tangential velocity. But we should also know that the velocity tangential is equal to the, oh, whoops, not, not the angular acceleration, the angular velocity times radius. Okay, so I'm going to change this omega to be, instead of that, I'm going to change this to be v tangential divided by r and then both of these are squared. Another little trick we could do is, remember this is r squared as well, 0.38. We could, I could cancel that one out with that one there. Okay, and this will kind of help us find what velocity tangential is gonna be. So I'm gonna use my form, I'm gonna use my calculator, 236, times two, times five, divided by two, divided by 28, square root of that, and I get 6.49 meters per second. Okay, I hope that all made sense. Uh, sadly, it is one of the easier parts of this energy one, but if not, just watch it back, you'll get used to it. Okay, moving on. A light rope is wrapped around a hollow cylinder. We're kind of saying this, um, this bike is a hollow cylinder, which it kind of is. Uh, which the inertia of a hollow cylinder is mr squared with a weight of 40 newtons and a mat and a radius of 0.25 meters that rotates without friction about a fixed horizontal axis. The cylinder is attached to the axle by spokes of negative moment of inertia. The free end of the rope is pulled with a constant force P. I'll call this force P. Great. Uh, for a distance of 5 meters, at which end the end of the rope is moving at 6 meters per second. If the rope does not slip on the cylinder, what is P? Okay, so it moves this a distance of 5 meters. Great. This radius here is equal to 0.25 meters. Um, great. And the mass of this wheel is 4 kilograms. Just because I know this is 40 newtons. Okay, so what is this force P? So one thing that we should know about is work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Okay. Attack. Mm -mm -mm. So what we're going to know is the work done is the force P times uh, the distance it travels, which is 5 meters. Um, and then this is going to be times cosine of, oops, sorry, cosine of zero 
uh, because the rope and the force are going in the same direction is going to equal the change in kinetic energy okay so the at first the bike isn't moving so it's just going to be one half mv oh wait sorry it's not going to be moving translationally it's only going to be moving rotationally one half i omega final squared minus one half i omega initial squared and at the beginning the initial angular velocity is zero so this is just zero so we have fp times five cosine zero is just one is equal to one half i which is mr squared the mass of the tire is four the radius of the tire is 0.25 squared that's the inertia and then the omega final squared so what are we talking about we don't know what the omega is but we do know the tan tangent of velocity is six meters per second so we can say v tan is equal to omega divided by r so i'm going to just replace this with v tan squared divided by radius squared and like we did last time since this is both radius squared and they're on numerator and denominator we can cancel that out and since we know what v tan is we could also plug that in that's six meters per second all right now i'm going to put this into my calculator six squared times four times 0.5 and then divide it by five and then we see the force of p is equal to 14.4 newtons boom okay that was helpful moving on all right guys so what we have here uh let's look at this example 27 a solid cylinder with a mass of 10 kilograms 10 kilograms a radius of 0.7 meters 0.7 meters has a string wrapped around it that is attached to a block the block has a mass of two kilograms two kilograms and when released moves down a distance h and hits the ground with a velocity of 10 meters per second 10 meters per second find the value of h all right great so for this kind of problem which is a simple conservation of energy problem I'm going to think about all of the energy at the beginning before this block is released and then all the energy at the end when this block hits the ground at 10 meters per second okay so at the very beginning there's only one type of energy that is the gravitational potential energy and right before it hits the ground there's two types of energy there's kinetic energy translational that's coming from the block and then there's also kinetic energy rotational that's coming from this cylinder okay so let's plug things in we have the mass of the block which is two kilograms gravity which is 10 and the height to which the block falls great and translational kinetic energy one half the mass of the block which is two and uh, it's going to be going 10 meters per second right before it hits the ground rotationally we're now going to be looking at the cylinder so we have we know the inertia one half mr squared so it's going to be one half times the inertia which is one half of the mass of the cylinder which is 10 kilograms and we have the radius but i'm just going to put r squared okay and then we have the angular velocity squared but and i hope you guys are comfortable with this now but we should know that the tangential velocity is equal to omega times r which means omega is equal to velocity tangential divided by r so i'm going to change that to help us I do uh, velocity divided by r squared sorry let me get rid of this and the reason why i didn't put the r in before is because i can just clearly show you that the r's cancel out and velocity we know what that is the tangential velocity right here is going to be the same as this 10 meters per second so let me just put that there 10 squared okay so let me plug things in as best I can do the math 10 squared plus oops times 10 times 0.5 times 0.5 plus 10 oops 10 squared times 1 uh, and then we're going to divide by 20 and we get h oopsie 
Yep, h is equal to 17.5 meters. Hope that all makes sense. Going to be moving on. Okay, conceptual example eight. A ball is released from rest on a non-slip surface. After reaching its lowest point, the ball begins to rise again, this time on a frictionless surface as shown in the figure. Uh, when the ball reaches its maximum height on the frictionless surface, it is A, at a greater height when it was released, B, at a lesser height than when it was released, C, at the same height than when it was released, or D, it is impossible to tell. Um, okay, so something to note is that there's friction on this side and no friction on this side. So something important to note is when this ball is going down this ramp, it's going to be rolling. The reason for that is because friction allows for it to roll. If there was no friction, it would just slide down. It wouldn't roll down. Over here, there is no friction, but since it's already rolling, it's going to continue to roll okay, and slide at the same time. Um, so what's happening is as it's going down, this potential energy here, it has a bunch of potential energy. That's going to be converted to two types of energy, kinetic energy translational and kinetic energy rotational. What that means is it won't be able to get up as high because some of the energy transfers to the spinning energy, meaning it's since mechanical energy is conserved, it can't be more. So the translational kinetic energy won't equal the total potential energy, meaning it won't get as high. So it will be at a lesser height than when it was released. Okay, moving on. Okay, so object moving translationally and rotationally. Uh, we've kind of been talking about this, but we can see that the one half mz mv center of mass squared plus one half inertia omega squared. Okay, and we've kind of been talking about that. But for example, a ball rolling, there's going to be have a translational velocity and also a spinning velocity. That of the kinetic energy that we have to think about. Okay, moving on. Example 28, a spherical ball with a mass of two kilograms, two kilograms, with a radius of 0.3 meters, 0.3 meters, okay, rolls slipping down a hill, uh, uh, eight meters, down a uh, eight meter high hill, okay, eight meters. What is the velocity of the ball at the very bottom? Okay, so we want to know what the velocity is at the bottom. So same thing. Mechanical energy at the beginning equals mechanical energy at the end. Um, so at the very beginning, we're going to have just potential energy. Um, yeah, I'll do potential energy like this this time. And when it goes all the way down to the bottom, there's going to be two types of energy. There's going to be kinetic energy, rotational. Oh, actually, let me do translational first. Kinetic energy, translational, plus kinetic energy. Well, what am I doing? kinetic energy rotational. So we have the gravitational potential energy of the ball, which is 2 times 10 times the height, which is 8. And then this is going to be equal to 1 half the mass of the ball, which is 2 v squared. That's what we're looking for. And then we're going to have plus the kinetic energy, which is 1 high, half i, uh, which we have here, 2 fits m, Two, and again, I'm just going to put r squared, even though we have r, and then uh, angular velocity squared. And like we've doing in the past, we know that the angular velocity is equal to velocity divided by radius. So I'm going to just change this to be velocity squared divided by radius squared, and then both of these cancel out. And now we have only one variable, velocity. So let's simplify some things. We have 80 and then 160. So 160 is equal to v squared plus 2 divided by 5 times 2 times 5, 0.4 v squared. Okay, so we have 160 is equal to 1.4 v squared. Now we can find v. Okay, 160 divided by 1.4. And then the square root of that, we can find velocity is 10.69 meters per second. Okay. All right. I think this is the last one. 
a little bit harder, but hopefully we can figure it out, take our time. A solid sphere is rolling without slipping along a horizontal surface with a speed of 5.5 meters per second. When it starts up a ramp that makes at an angle of 25 degrees with the horizontal. Hold on, let me just do something. 5 meters per second, okay. What is the speed of the sphere after it has rolled up, rolled uh, 3 meters up the ramp measured along the surface of the ramp? Okay, great. So it's gone up 3 meters and we want to know what the speed of the sphere is. So the velocity at this point. Okay, so a lot going on here. So at the very beginning, we're going to do conservation of energy again. Uh, and that's going to equal the same amount of energy at the end. At the very beginning, right before it rolls up the ramp, there is translational kinetic energy, there is rotational kinetic energy, and when it gets up to the 3 meter mark up the ramp, there's going to be a certain amount of gravitational potential energy, then there's also going to be a certain amount of translational vol uh, energy, it's supposed to be moving up the ramp, and rotational energy. And maybe I'll call these finals. All right, so let's do this. We have one half. Oh, we don't know what mass is, so m, but we do know the velocity at the beginning. It's 5.5 .5 squared plus one half, two fifths. Uh, the mass of the ball, which we don't know. Um, I'm just gonna put r squared. Actually, we don't even know what r is this time, so r squared. And again, like we should know by now, we know that omega is equal to v over r. So I'm going to just change that angular velocity to be uh, velocity squared divided by radius squared. And I'm going to cancel this out. And I'm going to replace the velocity with 5.5 because that's what it is. Great. And then the mechanical energy final at the 3 meter mark is going to be, well, a few things. We should figure out what this height is. So let me just do some Sokotoa. We know this is three meters. So I'm just gonna do three times sine of 25 to figure out that it's gonna be 1.27 meters. So it's gonna be mass, which we don't know, gravity, which is 10, and the height, which is 1.27 meters, plus the kinetic energy translational, which is one half m, and v squared, we don't know what v is, or m, and then plus one half um, the inertia, which is two fifths m r squared, and this is a v final, so we don't know what that is. And again, I'm gonna convert the omega squared, omega final squared to be v squared final over r squared. And luckily, this just cancels out. So we don't know velocity final, and we don't know m, but the good thing is m is in each part of this equation, so we can cancel it out. Cancel out m, 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 m. Okay, let's simplify this as much as possible. <laughs> 5.5 squared times 0.5 is equal to 15.13 plus 5.5 squared times 2 divided by 5 divided uh, by 2, uh, 6.05. And this is going to equal 12.7 plus uh, 0.5 VF squared plus uh, 2 divided by 5 times 0.5, uh, 0.2 VF squared. Okay, let's simplify this a bit. 15.3 plus 6.05 minus 12.7. So that's going to be 8.65 is equal to 0 0.7 VF squared. Whew, a lot of math. Hopefully you're with me. Divided by 0 0.7. Um, and then the square root of that. And we should get 3.52 meters per second. Whew, that's a lot. If you need to watch it again, please do so. There's a lot going on right there. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Next time, we're going to be talking about parallel axis theorem. All right, see you then. Bye.